that our lives are impacted and changed. We have the privilege to bring to you the Word of God as you listen to God's servant, Pastor Wali Olaseji. Sit back, relax, and be blessed as you listen. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We celebrate you. We stand in awesome worship of you. Jesus, thank you because many years ago you came so that we can have life, we can be free, we can be saved. And now today we are asking you that you bring us into the full consciousness of the reason you came. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. And I was just thinking about my life and like I look at how my life has been how God has been faithful to me and particularly at the salvation of my soul I look at the trajectory it has followed and I could trace everything back to when I met Jesus and I began to think back where did this all start from? How did I get here? And that's how I'll be sharing with you this morning where it all began. The reason we can sit here today was because something happened many years ago. The reason we have free access to the Father, it began from somewhere. You see, for the world, Jesus coming looked like an accident for the world Jesus coming was like every other arrival of any child but for God he planned it for destiny it was sorted out for prophecy it was predicted God had everything in mind the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you. Bible tells us there that he was foreordained before the foundation of the world. That means that his coming was already known what we are just have in the beginning of Matthew and the other Gospels, which we celebrate today, is the manifestation. Bible says it was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but it was manifest in these last times for you. So the birth of Jesus was a watershed in history. His arrival changed everything. Everybody before his time looked up unto him. For unto you a son is given. So they looked forward. Everybody after him looked back to him. So he became the reference point in history. If you know Jesus, you know everything. But what exactly is it about this Jesus? One thing that makes him unique was not just because his birth was announced before it happened. That same thing happened to Samson. An angel came and announced the, the, the pregnancy and the birth of Samson. It wasn't just because his name, the name he would be called, was already given he was before he was born. He wasn't the only one that was given a name before his arrival. But you see, quite a few things I'll be sharing with you Mark Jesus as different from them. Hallelujah. So if you begin to read in the book of Luke, we see Luke talk quite a lot, not just about Jesus Christ, but also about Elizabeth, Zacharias, and John, the arrival of John, before he begins to talk about the arrival of uh, Jesus Christ. So, Zechariah was from the tribe of Judah and uh, 
Zachariah was living in Judea, rather. Sorry about that. It was from, uh, it was a priest, and his wife Elizabeth was one of the daughters of Aaron, which means that she was a Levite. Does that make sense? And so they were barren, they were old. Now, when you compare them with the family of Joseph and Mary, Mary was a virgin. Joseph was a young man who was just trying to settle down. We know that there was an age difference, you know, between the two families. These were, were an older couple. These were trying to become a couple. They were trying to, to, to set themselves up. And a baby came for the family of uh, Elizabeth and Zachariah. They called him John, which means uh, Jehovah has favored us or something like that. And then Mary had an angelic visitation. The same Gabriel that had visited Elizabeth, visited, that had visited Zechariah rather, visited her. So Zechariah was the one that saw the angel. Meanwhile, here, Mary saw the angel, the same angel, Gabriel. We have only a few angels named in the Bible. Uh, theologians say about four of them. Here we see Gabriel, right? Uh, Gabriel, then we understand Michael was there. Bible tells us concerning Michael in Daniel and Revelation. Those were two good angels that were mentioned. We know about Lucifer, right? Bad angel. And then we know about uh, Apollyon or Abaddon in Revelation. Now, if you have ever been in some circles where they love to mention a lot of names of angels you will not find many of those names in the bible so it's safe for you to just stay with you know the ones that are mentioned here hallelujah so the angel appeared to uh mary and just like was demonstrated in pigeon announced to her that you are in the plan of god basically that was what he told her that the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you are going to have uh, a child. Hallelujah. But this child, you see, and then, okay, he also told her that your cousin Elizabeth, you know, has been with child. Now, theologians tell us that the word cousin there did not exactly mean that they were uh, cousins as we call cousins in English because as we said earlier on, Number one, Zechariah himself was a priest. Elizabeth was the daughter of Aaron, which means that she was a Levite. But Joseph and Mary were from the tribe of Judah. So, which means that they were not even from the same tribe. Basically, they were only countrymen, not cousins the way we, you know, call cousins today. Hallelujah. So, Mary got to know by angelic revelation that Elizabeth that was barren was already pregnant too and they le she left to go visit her. And then Luke continues to tell us about the arrival of the baby John and it goes forward to chapter 2 to tell us how that because of census, Joseph had to take Mary and they went to Bethlehem of Judea. Hallelujah. They went where? By Luke's account, they were living, particularly Mary was living in Nazareth. Nazareth was in Galilee. Let me just explain a little uh, for the purpose of history. In the days of Jesus Christ, in Bible times, the way Israel was, uh, it's not the way it is today, but you need to understand how it was. Um, uh, in the south was what we call Judea. In the north is what we call Galilee. Okay? These two were provinces in Israel. And separating them was the not very Jewish Samaria. So, Galilee, Judea, Samaria. So whenever you read, and the Bible is going to mention a city or a town, is likely going to tell you which province of Israel it is. Hallelujah. So, we understand that Joseph was from Bethlehem of Judea. 
Bethlehem of where? Which makes him come from south or north? Again, south. But they were living in Nazareth of Galilee. Maybe I could quickly show you that. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 verse 26. Let's read this together, everybody. Okay, can we go together? It's on the screen. One to go. Does that make more sense to you now? Into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So where is Nazareth, south or north? Again, north. Now if you see Matthew chapter 2, Matthew chapter 2 and in verse 1. Matthew 2, 1. Can we read that together? It's on the screen. One, to go. Okay, we can stop there for now. So you see, he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. They were living in Nazareth of Galilee. Some more prominent cities in Judea, for example, Ju- Jerusalem was in Judea. So, they were the custodians of the temple and anything you call, uh, you know, the worship of God. In Galilee, that's where you have, you remember that story? Where did Jesus do his first miracle? The first recorded the one in John? Eh? How did they record Cana? Cana of Galilee. So, we understand that in, in, in John there, what you have was Cana of Galilee. Uh, what about this one of these most popular cities that Jesus moved around? Capernaum. Capernaum was in Galilee too. So when next you read the Bible and you see the name of a place, look for whether it is in Galilee or, tis, or it is in Judea. Do you understand? So do like this. Galilee, Judea, Samaria. So most of the time when people are moving from Judea to Galilee, they pass through Samaria. Do you get that? Hallelujah. Now, already you can see Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 that Jesus was actually born in Bethlehem. And I'm going to share with you three very important things that make the birth of Jesus to be very unique. Are we still together? Say amen if you are with me. Good. Number one is the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. The virgin birth of Jesus. Can we say that together? I cannot hear you very well. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Now listen. I'll explain something to you. Don't forget we started from 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 where it says that he had been foreordained before the foundation of the world. Why? It's because man, God saw man fall into sin. He gave man choice, but man would fall into sin. Man would fall into sin. And so God made the plan that Jesus would come to die for man. So the question is, why did God have to send Jesus? It is because one, the person that will save man from sin cannot be a man. Are we together? The Bible said, uh, uh, David wrote, he said, in sin, my mother conceived me. He said, he that is born of a woman is a sinner. So, we understand that once one goes through that process, there is what is called the depravity of man. Once one goes through that process of a man, meeting a woman they are they come with that sinful nature they don't need to learn sin they come with that sinful nature and so that kind of person is not only to save man from his sin so god sent jesus christ to come into the world to save man from his sin are you still with me but there was another problem The other problem was that 
blood has to be shed for man to be saved. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. In the Old Testament, they shed the blood of goals and bulls. One of these Sunday, when I have more time, maybe we'll, we'll look at these things in more details. So they shed a lot of blood. Okay, if you were in the Old Testament, you would have brought pigeon, you would have brought all manner of things to sacrifice. But God knew that the final cleansing, the final salvation of man will require the blood of someone. It says, for it is impossible that the blood of goats and bulls should save man. So, don't forget, now man, man will be saved by somebody above man, right? But that person needs to die. So, how does a God die? God cannot die because he's not subject to death, right? What will he do? He has to come then as a man. Is somebody still with me? The reason Jesus came as a man was for death. In fact, the Bible tells us, let me show you that very quickly, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2 and in verse 9. Hebrews 2, 9. Can we read this together, everyone, very loud? One, to go. Okay, we can stop there. Okay, let's finish it. Let's start again and then we'll finish it. One, to go. Does that make sense to you? So Jesus, Bible says, was made a little lower than the angels. Whenever you see that phrase in the Bible, made a little lower than the angels, it means he was made a man. Because a man was, is a man, is a little lower than the angels. So he was made a little lower than the angels. Why? For the suffering of death. So the reason he came as a man was so that he could be killed. If he came as God, Nobody could kill him. A God does not die. Are you with me? So he came as a man so that he could be killed. Now we run into two problems. He that will save man cannot be like man. But then he that will save man has to die for man. The result was the invention called the virgin birth. By the virgin birth, he came without the depravity of man. So Jesus was never a sinner. Hallelujah. Is somebody still with me? Every man that comes through the seed of man will have to be saved. But Jesus was not of the seed of man. There was no intercourse between a man and a woman to produce Jesus. So he never needed to be saved. Are you with me? Yet he came as a man so that blood could run through his veins. So that when the time came, Jesus would die. And at the end of the day, Jesus died for our sins. The Bible says so that he could taste death for every man. That was the reason for the virgin birth. And any teaching that denies the virgin birth makes Jesus a sinner unqualified to save man. Any teaching that does not mention that Jesus was born of a virgin makes Jesus like every one of us that will need a savior himself. But Jesus does not need a savior. Isaiah chapter 7 and in verse 14, what does it say? Isaiah chapter 7 and in verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. 
So the virgin birth of Jesus was not something they cooked together in the New Testament. It's the subject of a prophecy that the savior of the world must come through a virgin birth. Now, it was not a perpetual virginity, which means that after Jesus was born, Mary had other children. Okay? Jesus had siblings. But before Jesus was born, a virgin had to produce it. Come on, shout hallelujah. No other person like was like that. And because I have said no other person was like that, we do not have prophecy that says another person will be like that. What that means is that you cannot come and say, Pastor, I didn't have any relationship with a man. Now I'm pregnant. It's of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you can't be pregnant of the Holy Ghost like that. Amen. In record, only Jesus was. Nobody ever went through this. And for Jesus, it was so that he was not subject to the depravity of man. Number two thing that we find unique about Jesus was the place of his birth. Where was Jesus born? I didn't hear that. No, the place. The, the, the name of the... Huh? Bethlehem of Judea. Bethlehem of Judea. Don't forget they came from Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem of Judea. Why does it have to be Bethlehem of Judea? In Micah chapter 5 and in verse 2, Micah chapter 5 and in verse 2, it says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, of old from everlasting. Hallelujah. We see here there was, there was one Bethlehem in Galilee also. And some, some historians have said that Jesus must have been born in Bethlehem of Galilee. But here it says, you'll be little among the thousands of Judah. So we know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Why it's important is because this resonates with the, 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 the city of David also. This resonates with, uh, with, with the birth of David. Hallelujah. So when you read and read, you will see the Bible mentions very quite often how that Jesus was following the footstep of his father, David. And uh, the city of David is, is in Judea. The birth of David was in Judea. And so our Lord Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Shout hallelujah. We are following this because everything is prophecy. Everything was already written or spoken. And Jesus came to fulfill what God has said. Number three thing I want you to note is that the Bible says it shall be called a Nazarene. It shall be called a Nazarene. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2 and in verse 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now, I want you to take note that there's a difference between a Nazarene and a Nazarite. We find Nazarite quite a few times in the Old Testament. And a Nazarite means someone fully devoted and consecrated to the things of God. So like Samson, you remember Samson? He was a Nazarite of God. Uh, razor was not to touch his head. They had some strange commitments like that. But a Nazarene is one that is from Nazareth. Does that make sense? Hello? So that's what the Bible says. And by the way, <laughs> the historians have told us here that if you check through prophecy, you will not find a prophecy written where it says Jesus, you know, will come from 
uh, Nazareth. And, but it says that it might be filled which was spoken by the prophet. So theologians say it didn't say that was written by the prophet. It said that was spoken. That means there must have been a prophecy spoken that it will come from uh, Nazareth. Hallelujah. But I want you to see these three things in this light. Number one, no single prophecy written concerning his birth was not fulfilled. I want you to know that no matter how your life looks like today, everything God has written or spoken to concerning you, it will come to pass. Let me hear your loud amen. amen. Let, let me show you, particularly the last two points I made, Bethlehem and Nazareth, how God arranged the details. He, the, 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 uh, they were in Nazareth. Hallelujah. But he was to be born in Bethlehem. How will that happen? The timing of the pregnancy was so important. Divine punctuality is never late. It came at the right time. And just when he was about to be born, God moved the government of the day to announce a census. Joseph and Mary by themselves wouldn't have left for Bethlehem if not that government announced that you must go through census. Now, many people do census in their where they live, right? So, for example, I live in Lagos, Nigeria at the moment. If I want to do census, I'll do my census here. They'll count me here as one of the residents here. But this time, there was a specific order by the government of the day that you must go back to your land of nativity to be to, to, to be counted to be taxed hallelujah so it meant that joseph and mary had to live where they were living for bethlehem because that was the clause in the policy and it was while they were in bethlehem that the birth came look at what god just did let's clap for jesus christ Listen, what are you going through today? Maybe you are thinking that my, everything about me is out of order. No, God has got your back. Maybe you are thinking where I am today. I don't even understand my life. Jesus understands your life. And he can help you find meaning out of the chaos. He can help you find direction out of the confusion. Hallelujah. So, he was born in Bethlehem. Because of time, I don't want to read all the story. That's in Matthew chapter 2. The wise men came, okay, from the east. And they came to worship him. By the way, can we quickly distinguish between the wise men of Matthew and the shepherds of Luke? The wise men of Matthew, by the time they saw Jesus... They saw him in the house. Can you remember that? They saw him in the house. The shepherds of Luke, when they saw Jesus, they saw him in the manger. So really, many times, particularly when we were children, we thought they were the same people. They were not the same people. Hallelujah. So in Matthew chapter 2, these wise men, they came because they saw a star in the east, and they said they came to worship him. They got to Herod, and Herod said, please go and look for him. When you find him, bring me word also, so that I can go and worship him. Eventually, they found him. And when they found him, they worshipped him. And the Lord spoke to them not to go back to Herod. Now listen to this. Herod then ordered that all the children, all the male children below one should be killed so that he could get rid of Jesus. And so they ordered that. Now, if you were one of the wise men, how would you feel? You would feel, if, I, if only I knew I shouldn't have gone to Herod. Abby? If only I knew. If only I knew. If only I knew. But the Bible says that it may be fulfilled. Let's read that together. Matthew chapter 2. 
But it is so that it can be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and will not be comforted because they are not. So, if you are here today, you are feeling guilty because of a step you took, you know, and led to the destruction of many. Well, if it was, if it was God that led you there, you don't need to feel guilty. Because God led the wise men from the east, and yet their movement led to the death of many children. So, don't feel guilty. Don't let guilt kill you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But by this time, Joseph had carried the boy to Egypt. So when he heard that Herod had died, he decided to come back to Israel. And when he was coming back to Israel, he heard that it was the son of Herod that was, you know, reigning in his stead. And he decided that instead of going to Bethlehem, it was better they go to Nazareth. Hallelujah. It was better they do what? How do we know where Nazareth is again? In uh, Matthew chapter 2 verse 22. Can we see that very quickly? I want you to begin to read the Bible with new light. Matthew 2 22. 22 and 23. But when he heard that Achilles did reign in Judea. In the room of his father Herod. Reign where? Again, reigned where? Where was Herod? Judea. Do you remember the wise men went to Judea? Right? That was where Jesus was born. So now he heard that Achilles did reign in Judea in the room of his father. He was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. So he didn't go to Judea. He didn't go to Judea. He went to Galilee. And we're in Galilee, verse 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, it shall be called a Nazarene. Hallelujah. So look at how God arranged the details that he must be born in, in Bethlehem of Judea and that he will come out of Nazareth. Jesus came and he came to save us. Matthew 1 21 you will call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sin. Now the kingdom of God is not a meat and drink but in joy peace you know and all of that. The Bible says that for you to know that in as much as you are joining the whole world in celebrating Jesus, his birth is not properly celebrated if the reason for his coming has not been fulfilled in your life. You will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. If you are here this morning and you are still living in your sins, today can be that day when you align the celebration of Christmas with the purpose of Christmas. The reason it came was so that you can be saved. Make this your birth date. Like, G like Pastor Vincent shared with us. How the many Christmas ago, it became his birthday. I'm asking in that season, I'm asking that today, you too, you can make Jesus the Lord of your life. Number two, he came so that he can destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3 and in verse 8. First John chapter 3 and in verse 8. The Bible tells us he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Can we read this last part together everybody? Want to go? For this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. You remember that word manifested again? Manifested. First Peter 120. Say it was ordained from the beginning of the world, from the from before the foundation of the world, but it was manifested. Now, first John 3:8 says, 
for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The reason he came was so that every work of the devil in your life he might destroy. And this morning I'm praying for you that whatever work Satan has instituted in your life and your family because Jesus came may they be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. He came so that he can destroy the work of the devil. Ah, uh-uh, that's so beautiful, isn't it? Wherever the work of the devil is showing forth in your life, may they be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. As we round off this morning, because that was where it all began from, as we round off this morning, I want you to know that even though there are various thoughts about the exact date, of the birth of Jesus. A lot of people believe that he wasn't born on December 25th. And what I say to people is this. There are even people in our, I mean, around that don't, that are not too sure of the date of their birth. Maybe because they didn't get a birth certificate or something. I mean, our grandparents didn't even, weren't sure. They just related to when the moon appeared and all of that. So the exact date of the birth of Jesus shouldn't give you a problem. But one thing that we know is this, that this period, he came. And he is worthy of celebration. Come help me tell your neighbor, celebrations are in order. One more time, celebrations are in order. But don't you see a principle? Nobody in their right senses to make the celebrant unhappy on his birthday. That means that whatever you know Jesus does not love shouldn't happen on his birthday. It is statistically proven that this period of Christmas is the period the most sins are committed in a year. Statistically. People who have never, who never had money to drink, they must drink this prayer. Eh? People, young guys, they'll be looking for babes all around. You know what I'm talking about? Their concern is not about the celebrant. Their concern is just festivity. That, what they call Christmas, Christmas is actually about festivity. But that's not how it was celebrated. When Jesus was born, the Bible tells us in Matthew, yeah, uh, actually in Luke, I don't know if I should read that because of time. In Luke chapter 2, in verse 10, I mean, we can read starting from verse 8, starting from verse 8, and the angel, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And in verse 13, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying verse 14 glory to God in the highest and on earth peace good will toward men hallelujah so when God wanted to give us the prototype of the celebration of the birth of Christ it was about praising him no no they didn't go to a shrine they praised him no, 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 they didn't go to a club. They gathered together singing praises to God. You will be out of divine order if you celebrate him in a way that will make him feel that his coming was a waste. You will be out of order if you celebrate him in a way that will make him feel that his coming was a waste. The Bible actually mentions to us that when he brought the when they brought the beloved into the world, when they brought the first begotten into the world, he said, let all the angels worship him. Hebrews chapter 1, 
and in verse 6. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Let's read that together. Hebrews 1, 6. Again, let's read it together. I want to go. Hallelujah. The same way he asked the angels to worship him in those days, the same way he's asking you to worship him today. It's a period of celebration, no doubt, but it is a restricted celebration. Not to be gallivanting all over the whole place. Remember the reason he came. Remember the reason of his, of, of his coming. And let us live lives that imbibe this principle this season. Raise your right hand and shout, Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. And you know, some years ago, I wrote an article. And I, I, I saw x marks, x marks all over the whole place. And I wrote an article and in that article I said let there be Christ in your Christmas. Did you get that? Say that with me. Let there be Christ. Again. That's what God is asking us to do in this season. I want us to rise to our feet this morning. Join the angels of heaven and just say thank you for sending Jesus. For the next one minute, we just say thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus. We do hope you have been blessed by the word. This is Living Impact Christian Center, a place of the living and life-giving word. For further inquiries, counseling, and sponsorship details, visit our website, www.licc.church, or call us on 70 7727. You are warmly welcome to be part of our weekly service at Vital Phone Building, second floor, 23 Association Avenue, off Urbanico Robust Stop, Lupeju, Lagos. I give it to you, I give it to you.